Hey YouTube, I'm back at it out in the garage. A uh, beautiful warm day, but uh, let's get you caught up on what I've been working on and get this next video set up. So I've uh, been working on this uh, weight reduced rear end here. <laughs> um, you know, the, the floor was all cut out before I got it. So I've got a new floor that's coming on the way. And uh, I had a really Swiss cheese sail panel back here. Uh, just in really, really bad shape. There's uh, pieces of it there on the ground. Still got to pick up a little bit. But uh, I got some of the, uh, the paint and filler and everything that was uh, on here before stripped off with the, the Eastwood Contour SCT, which worked really good. Nope. Got all stripped off to kind of have a look at the integrity of the panels here on either side and found just a little ding in that one spot and then there is a little rust pit hole right there so i think i'll just make use of a small portion of this patch panel that i've got because i didn't order it up before i knew exactly how bad it was because things were covered over and i didn't know if it was hiding any sins but uh, there's some some pitting on this lower section here and then a little hole is right there so what i'm thinking is just cutting a lower patch out of here and welding in just the section that's a little poor but leaving all the rest of it because i want to keep as much of this original as possible melted out the uh, the lead that was covering in this body seam and i also did this one for this lower section and i weld that in i left uh, the factory stuff right up here because i didn't have any need to melt that out and then when i get the the new patch welded in I'll just use the uh, aluminum filled filler that I got um, for replacing the lead seams in this spot to cover that over. Gonna put a backer on that and fill up that little hole. And uh, that'll be good. The other side is a little more uh, Swiss cheesed. This one's got some bigger holes and such there, so I'll be using a little, well, it might probably be the same size patch actually for each side and cut a little section from here and over and down this lower section looks like there's a little bit of uh, some previous repair attempts there's some thinner stuff here and maybe some weld boogers and stuff here at the bottom so I'm gonna investigate that a little bit so maybe it'll come over to there and down on this newer patch piece but yeah if you get a hole right here then you're probably the size of a quarter that means the back side of that's rusted out to about, you know, yay big or so. Probably about five times the size of that. So I'll get that piece put in and then I put in a new sill. Cut out this uh, cross sill that's the last remnants of the, uh, the floor back here. So got the rear body mount bolt with the rubber mount that's still in there. Get that cut off. This lower channel is actually not in the worst shape, but I got a new floor that has all the the bracing and stuff in there. And I found something interesting whenever I was uh, digging around in here. Let's see if I uh, lower this a little bit. This quarter inch angle iron heavy piece in there. I don't know if somebody, there's a hole right here. Maybe they were beefing this up for a tow bar or something like that i don't know but that is not the factory piece in there that thing is freaking heavy so if, when i was looking the c channel here is actually not in bad shape for the original cross member it's just beef that they stuck in there holy cow that uh, that was certainly interesting to have a look at so I can't imagine that was any kind of factory thing. You can see on this side actually where it was notched out um, to make room for the uh, the body mount there. Uh, so yeah, that's beef, but it's going away. <laughs> I don't really need that. I mean, technically you could maybe use that for a cross piece. So um, I had considered taking this angle and welding it up over by the uh, rear end hump here and using it for a mount for a, a shock relocation to get those shocks off of the the floor 
where they the upper portion of the shock mounts through those holes and it's not rusted out or even like fatigue cracked or anything in those holes when i was looking at it but i'd rather have it mounted to something a little more sturdy so i might repurpose that angle um i could make my own shock mount out of that thing and you know a couple of other pieces of like quarter inch plate um, but i also make a you know shock mount relocation kit so i'll see what i want to do there after i get the, that angle you know unbolted and removed from here and i'll see what i want to do that um yeah and then of course you saw the one inch square tube that i used to kind of brace up the rear end here since it's no longer sitting on the body mounts as i was cutting this side it started to droop a little bit so I used the floor jack and pulled it back up into place so everything was lined up nice put that uh, bar across the side even before that though and uh, made sure that it stayed and kept the width side to side and then I just put this little down rigger down to the frame until I get the uh, the sill put back in and then uh, I'll loosen up the body mounts probably use this thing to with my floor jack to lift the rear end up a little bit and slide that new floor piece in and you know I'll make a cleaner cut up there across probably put that new floor and cut it right at this radius where it flattens off just to use that as the weld seam and got a little bit of patching to do in here on these uh inner like trunk walls so this is in decent shape here but behind the little bit of the uh the floor that is left you can see there's a little rot right here so i need to make some some uh patches for that spot and get that cleaned up there's a little bit in the corner so uh, get get that taken care of as well and cut out the little, last little remnant of the old floor in that spot and then on the uh, passenger side it's missing about three quarters of an inch in this area and same here so i'm going to uh kind of rebuild some of that as well like the end of this stiffening rib comes right about to where where this ends so i might be able to get away with just a straight section or i might need to use the bead roller just to put a little dimple something in there or maybe a socket you know on a, a bag or something to hammer it to kind of match that contour a little bit if i need to but make a little patching in there and uh you know i did have a little fun the other day i was sitting on a stool in here just bent over with a small chisel and a little hammer chipping out the seam sealer that goes between that rear seat bracing and the floor section there's a wide stretch of it about an inch and a half sometimes even two inches wide how there's a full width up here and i got in there and chipped all that out so i'll replace that with new seam sealer after i get the whole floor put in but uh it's been kind of fun haven't made that much progress really my dad's been getting pretty pretty bad with his sickness he's got a cancer and that's what we've been dealing with so it's starting to come near the end but in the uh, intervening days when i'm not over there I like to come out here and kind of work on the car as a way to you know take my mind off of that a little bit so that's why the video is kind of intermittent occasionally when i'm going taking care of him but uh get some uh work done here and get a little bit on camera hadn't done the last stuff because i just wanted to kind of hit it and work on it just on my own you know not really make worry about making a video setting up a camera or anything i just want to kind of get to it and go you know pull the the trunk off and just just get after it so anyway i'll uh set the camera up and we'll get some time lapse stuff as i cut out these sections and get the the new lower bits put in i'd like to get the whole sheet metal outer portion of this uh car you know the whole rear end put together and then whenever that trunk floor shows up it's supposed to be here like monday or tuesday um get that thing put in maybe over this uh coming thanksgiving weekend and then i'll have the full perimeter done and i'll have the rear floor in and uh, jack up the other side and cut out the uh, the actual main cab floor because it's about time to get that done we'll get all this rot taken out i need to get in and take out you know some of the the mounts for the uh, brake cables and such but get all that cut out and put the new floor in so it'll be all good to go and then uh yeah then i'll pick the body up and have it on its 
you know, its own mounts and roll this frame out from under it, get that cleaned up and painted and get the whole rolling chassis up and going so I can mock up the engine and trans. So lots of work to do, but you know, keep coming out here and uh, tackling a little bit every day and eventually get done. So stay tuned and we'll, uh, we'll get after it. Well, I got it cleaned up pretty good back here. This uh, panel is in really good shape. Like I said, just the one little spot right there of rust. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. Now, you can kind of see that gold color. There's some uh, brass in there. So, part of this was brazed, and that was sitting underneath the uh, lead. So, either someone re it after brazing, or... They used uh, brazing to kind of put this thing together, maybe. I don't know. Uh, if anybody knows that, go ahead and put a comment in the bottom. That'd be kind of cool to learn how these are all put together uh, on the assembly line, if you've seen that. Um, it's actually pretty cool, and it's in the exact same spot on this little flat section right there. And on the other side, right there, you can see it inside of where the leaded seam was. So I didn't melt all that out because I knew I was going to cut this out so I didn't get everything completely. And uh, yeah, as I was going through here, there's some dents and dings. Some of this has been banged out a little bit. You can definitely see a little bit of uh, weld boogers and some thinness here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace a little bigger patch on the passenger side here than on the driver. That seems to be a, a theme on here, other than the floor itself. Um, the few damaged spots that I do see is more on the right-hand side. So that lower A-pillar on the right side was you know, rotted away on the internal portion of it. Or on the driver's side, it was all really solid and really good. And the same thing back here. 
this is a lot more rotted and Swiss cheese back here on the right hand side, including <coughs> pardon me, the inner um, section of the trunk here is more rotted than on the uh, the driver's side. So, huh? Who knows? But we're getting it fixed. Um, yeah. So I want to get the rest of this uh, section of the floor, I think, cut out. Um, might take a couple of grinding discs or something to get the geometry right to get in there and get that, but get that cleared out. Everything that's part of the, the pan that's coming in, make sure I get it all out of there. So since I think I'm going to just make a, a patch with this lower strip, that'll take off where it's spot welded on the bottom side because this is uh, the trunk pan is kind of sandwiched right here and spot welded for a, a few spots um, right here and then it's just free and open from here to here basically so just a couple of spot welds but uh, yeah it's pretty cool to see how these are put together it's kind of fun I'm used to working on you know, C10s so this will be my first try five uh, it's cool learning about these things you know 10 years older than the 60s era trucks that i'm used to working on uh just learning how stuff was done it's pretty neat so anyway i'll set up the uh, time lapse again and get going on getting these uh, patches in and these sections right here and then uh once i get those things welded in and nice then i'll get that center section and that'll be looking good um oh i don't know if you notice i i knocked out the the body mounts and on this driver's side I actually kept everything the passenger side the upper washer was rusted so I didn't bother with it but uh, I wanted to keep the sack up here you know for the the bolt washer the smaller rubber piece on the bottom and then sleeve the little larger rubber piece on the top and the washer on top of that um, all underneath the floor brace and then uh, bolt head and washer on the top side through the floor it's just good to keep this stuff as a little reference because I got a uh, two kits actually I think uh, one of these boxes yeah this box over here was a rubber body mounts that came with the car when I got it I have no idea how old they are or if it has every single part left but Keeping this stuff in the orientation will allow me to match with that to find the right ones. And then I also bought a brand new set. So, you know, I might set one set on there for some of this welding and grinding and then put the, the newest, nicest set on there later. But uh, keeping these things can be handy as a reference. Also making videos <laughs> so you can go back and look months later when you're trying to put something back together. That's probably half the reason I started this channel was just to keep track of the stuff I'm doing. So I uh, appreciate everybody watching. That also helps. So, anyway, we'll uh, set this time lapse up and we'll get back to going on the, on the car here.
I got the driver's side cut out. Um, there we are. On this inner piece of structure, which is actually where the, uh, the inner part of the trunk comes in and then wraps around here. You see there's a hole here. Nice, bit my finger through there. And then some here. There's actually a crack right along here. So I've got a, a patch to make for that right here. And then I'll do one for up in there. Um, get that all stabilized. And then uh, I'll leave this section just for the reference to tie into. But yeah, got it cleaned out. And yeah, had used one cut. So I've got one kerf width for the weld to fill, but it should fit up pretty good. And uh, yeah, got a couple of Clico holes that I drilled. Those be easy enough to fill. Um, it helped keep that aligned while I was cutting it because the clamps were going to be in the way. I couldn't get around them with that cutoff wheel. So I needed to use the Clicos and then switch sides sometimes. You know, when I was cutting from one side, I'd move the Clico top, bottom, top, just to, to get it in the best location to be out of the way. It doesn't matter which side it's clamping from. But yeah, got this uh, cut out. So I'll get some of this crust out of here, rebuild this intersection, then get the, uh, the outer part welded on, and move on to the other side. So stay tuned.
well it's the next day i've got a couple of the patches done up and then it's time to come in for dinner and when i got back it was kind of cool and i didn't feel like firing up the heater so i just called it tonight figure i'd come back out the next day and uh, get after it nice warm weekend so it gives me a little bit of leeway for doing that but uh anyway i thought i'd uh, give you a little more detail before i went back to the time lapse um the inner structure uh, that wraps around from the inner panel as it comes in on the back side of this filler area on the side of the sail panel um, the support structure was had some rot here and then you can well, let's see there we go you see the patch kind of diamond shape that I got held in place there uh, two rotted spots there it's just getting some ugly patches in whatever uh, just fixing the the hidden sins rust there but kind of like this this patch is a cool shape to get filled in there um, kind of a compound shape where it it rolls off left to right but it also has a scoop to it so you know I make sure that if I just put it straight across I don't think the panel that goes over it is supposed to nest into it really well I think it would hit um, so yeah, I had the kind of the compound curve to it and just kind of formed it right here over the, the rear frame horn and it's the ball peen <laughs> but yeah I'll get that get that welded in ground down smooth and I'll get this patch welded in now I'll move over to the other side get that done because I haven't even cut it out much less get it prepped but I think one of the things we're going to do is on this side uh, spray it down with some of the rust converter and let it drip in from the top and sides where I can't quite get into it just to treat a little bit of that surface rust you can tell there's a little in there but uh, some of the spots that I, I just can't reach I'll use the Eastwood rust converter spray I think it's this one yeah so you can spray it right on the loose stuff and it converts it and seals it kind of like uh, uh, the rust covering paint stuff but it allows you to get on an area where you really can't get to it and I'll use that same thing in certain areas if I can't quite get in like on the frame I've got some of the uh, internal frame coating but uh, I'll treat other areas with it but I think the first one I'll use is in that spot but it was a good day working on stuff the other day uh, getting everything done from earlier in the video there it's just taken a long time a little longer than I was expecting but uh, yeah get this thing set up and get back after it
got kind of a funky shape on this particular panel a little one right here in between I was trying to do just one patch here and one over here but uh, the metal was just too thin in between and was blowing out with the welder so made that funky little Z shape patch so I got it pretty close to bent to shape I'll have to pound some of the rest of it into shape here and put a couple of tacks on it and then hit it to match. See, there's a little bit of a gap at the bottom right there that's kind of harder to fill with the thinner metal, but uh, it's a pretty solid strip down here until, like right here, there's a, another crack. That's about, let's see if I can outline it with this highlighter. big L shape right there so got another little patch to put in there too I'll get all this solid and then uh, be good get the uh, outer part put in so yeah it's going all right I'm back at it
Well, here we have it. Got this uh, left hand side welded on. Got the uh, Clico holes filled here. Still need to fill that one and this one. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and fill this hole. Uh, the lead originally covered over that spot. Uh, I'm just gonna fill it while I'm right here. But uh, yeah, all I got left on this side is to uh, dress it down. Um, I'll be doing the same exact thing on the right hand side, so I'm not gonna set it up and show all that. It's the same exact thing. Um, and then uh, whenever I get that side done, then I'll grind down these little rosettes and do the same thing for that sill panel um, that I did for putting this one on, drilling the holes and doing those rosettes onto this spot because it overlaps uh, just like this one did. And then, uh, yeah, my next video coming up should be uh, putting the floor in. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, if you haven't already, like and uh, subscribe. Thanks.